short video on how the impulse can be seen in other questions, specifically question four. So we have two particles P and Q of those specific masses are lying 0.5 meters apart on a horizontal table. So they're like that. They're connected by a string that's three and a half meters long though. So that means the string is slack. Uh, Q is six meters from the edge of the table. Okay, so six connected to R, which is three kgs hanging freely by a taut, light, and extensible string. So that's taut, meaning that if we leave go of that, th these two will have the same acceleration. And then eventually, when he travels a distance of three meters, so that the string between P and Q is then three and a half meters, that string in there becomes taut, and each of those will receive an impulse force. So we're going to have to work that out. Now the first thing we need to do is calculate the acceleration of that and that. So when you look at just the two particles separately, you get these two equations. Solve the simultaneous equations, there's the acceleration. Okay, <clears throat> after that then, we need the velocity with which that particle reaches uh, after it travels the three meters. Because it's already half a meter apart, so when it travels three further meters, it'll be three and a half meters from P, the string will become taut. So it travels three meters, the acceleration is that, because it's connected to R, and we have a two there, it starts from rest. So we get the velocity is equal to 4.2 meters per second. So when its velocity is 4.2 meters per second and Q's velocity is 4.2 meters per second, we'll have a jerking effect, which is the impulse. So we have to apply our impulse formula because the impulse experienced by one will be the same as the impulse experienced by the other. Now, another way of looking at this is if I say the impulse of one is equal to the impulse of the other and I fill in my MV minus MU in both cases, I'm going to have the principle of conservation of momentum at the end of the day. So <clears throat> that's what we have here. We have the momentum afterwards equals the momentum before. So the momentum before is caused by the motion of that and that. The combined masses of the two are 10 and the velocity of it or the velocity of them is 4.2. And then afterwards the three of them are moving with the same velocity. So I'd have m1 v1 plus m2 v1 or v2 plus m3 v3 but v1 v2 and v3 are equal so take that as a common factor and what I end up with then is when you solve it the final velocity of the combined masses moving to the right or downwards works out as three meters per second.